Socializing your new puppy during COVID-19 is something that can be a little bit frightening and a little bit daunting to many people. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuys Labradoodles, and today's video is going to be giving you all sorts of tips and tricks and things to do so that you can effectively socialize your Labradoodle puppy without having to worry about any concerns due to social distancing. So first of all, what is socialization for your Labradoodle puppy? Well, you've probably watched our other socialization video on our puppy's one, two, three playlist, and we call it desensitization interchangeably with socialization. Basically, what you're wanting to accomplish is to have a puppy that embraces new experiences, is confident in those new experiences, and isn't afraid of things. So there's lots of ways that we can do this. Now, for many puppies, doing this from a distance is actually preferable and more effective. If you've read a lot of training books and watched a, a lot of different training videos, you've probably heard and read and seen many times people saying your puppy needs a hundred different new experiences in the first hundred days, or even some saying your puppy needs to meet a hundred different people in the first hundred days. That's true to some extent. However, what's missing from that is the fact that those experiences need to be positive. If your puppy experiences 500 things and only 30 of them are positive, that's going to do damage to your puppy and you're going to end up with a fearful puppy. If your puppy only experiences 30 things and they're all really positive, that will be much better for your puppy. So for many puppies, when they meet people and other dogs and they're right face to face, that can be overwhelming and a bit intimidating. Now, if you have a mini Labradoodle and your mini Labradoodle is meeting, say, a German Shepherd dog, that can really be intimidating because they're just little. And even if you have a good size medium, as a puppy meeting a large dog and perhaps a large owner or a couple of owners with a large dog, that can be enough to put them off and the experience will not be altogether successful. So with social distancing we already have a built-in success thing going on here. Because we have to be six feet away from one another during COVID-19, it's easy for our Labradoodle puppies to feel confident and secure. They can easily see people and their dogs, but they're far enough away that they're not in the least bit intimidated by that close physical proximity. So that is actually an advantage. Now, what we really want to do to set our puppies up for success is to have them able to cope with things that they experience every day in life so that they're used to what they're going to normally see on a regular basis, comfortable with it and confident with it. Those are our main goals and those can all be done easily without having a lot of interaction and without a lot of physical proximity. So we want to have lots of new experiences and we want to do something different each day, but we can easily do that at home, with our car, using YouTube, and many other different opportunities. And it's a great opportunity to involve the whole family. Indeed, one of the things you really want to focus on is building your puppy's trust in you. Labradoodles are very social. They're going to gravitate towards you anyways. And your Labradoodle puppy just needs to get that confidence that, oh, mom, dad, and everyone else in the family is there they've got my back, they're looking after me. So if something does happen and they're like, ooh, I'm not too sure about what that just was, you're right there, you're reassuring them and providing them with that reassurance and they learn to have their trust built. Building trust is something you can do all day, every day with multiple different experiences at home with every member of the family. And that is such a basic key for success in having a calm and confident puppy, which is what all of us want to have. Now, we've got the distance that we've talked about. So one of the things we can start using is our cars. The car is great. The car is safe for you, no contact with anyone else. Put your puppy in the car. Now, one of the things that we've added to our puppy package for all of our families who are getting puppies in the near future is a puppy booster seat. These are great. 
They can go in the front seat or the back seat. They clip in, they use your seatbelt assembly. You clip your puppy in so your puppy is safe, safe if there's an accident and also safe so your puppy is not jumping on you when you're trying to drive. And what it does is it raises your puppy up so that their eye level it makes it able for them to be able to see out the window beside their seat or out the windshield. So this is great. They can see all sorts of things. So take your puppy out for a drive. You can go on all sorts of field trips. So first of all, go to town. Go to town, drive through the, um, the shopping mall, pick a grocery store because we know for sure there's people at the grocery stores. They'll see lots of different people. You can even just park in the parking lot, let them watch people walk by. Maybe somebody will be waiting with a dog who knows, they'll hear the buggies, they'll hear the traffic, they'll hear all sorts of different things. You can put your window down a bit so that they can hear the sounds, but that's a lot of stimulation for them visually. And another thing you can do is go to somewhere where there are, uh, where it's more of a country atmosphere. So hopefully you could go somewhere and perhaps see some sheep, some horses, maybe even some cows, roll down the window, stop, let your puppy get a good eyeful of all of these things and go, oh wow, look at this. You can also maybe park near a nature sanctuary where there's lots of birds. Now here in Duncan, where we live at Van Isle Doodles, we have many different uh, wildlife areas that we can drive quite close to. And one of them is a bird sanctuary. So there's the Canada geese and you know how much noise Canada geese make when they're taking off. Great experience. We also have the raptors nearby. So you can take your Labradoodle puppy into the parking lot there. You don't have to get out and they will hear the sounds of the birds. All sorts of different opportunities. There won't be any sporting activities you can take them to, which is something we normally recommend, but these things will fill in really nicely. And you can just go somewhere maybe once a week, Take your puppy with you when you go do your grocery shopping after they're quite comfortable in the car and you're able to leave them. Or two of you go in the car, ideally, and one of you stays in the car with your puppy and the other goes in to get your groceries. Go by drug stores, liquor stores. All those places are busy right now and you will find people and traffic and things to visually stimulate them. The other thing you can do is use YouTube. Now YouTube is going to provide you with all sorts of solutions during social distancing. You can also use Netflix or Prime or even just regular cable TV. And what you want to look for is some nature shows. Get some nature shows, turn the volume up louder than you would normally so your puppy is able to hear the sounds of other animals, birds, cats, dogs, all sorts of things. There'll be dog training videos that you can find on YouTube. There'll be videos about your dog barking. Put those on and let your dog hear barking and hear other dogs running around, hearing um, more wild type animals, you know, like tigers and lions making sounds and lots of birds. It's fantastic. Then you can also get YouTube to play all sorts of playlists that are thunder and lightning, city traffic, sirens, other dogs barking and crying, all sorts of things. These are fabulous tools for you to use with your puppy. Now again, you want to start with, and you'll hear this on our other socialization video, you want to start with the volume fairly low and work up to your puppy's tolerance level. Labradoodles can be very sensitive, so you don't want to be overwhelming them. And you don't want to start off with fireworks at full volume, for instance. You just want to start off with it in the background. So your Labradoodle puppy hears that and goes, oh yeah, huh, wonder what that is. Oh, and keeps playing. And you can have a toy nearby so that you're always interacting with your dog doing the toy and you're doing something fun and then you turn the volume up a bit, you use the toy so the experience is positive and you're always giving them confidence. You're there, you're petting them, they're safe. It'll be a great bit of socialization for your dog. So you can do some distance field trips too, where like I said, you go out to the country or you can go to a beach. They can hear the waves. They can look out and see some seagulls. And of course they make lots of noise. You can even go down uh, to one of the ferry terminals if you live on Vancouver Island, or even if you're on the mainland, uh, there won't be as much traffic as usual, but you can go to the terminal. They might hear the whistle. 
Uh, if you know where there's a railway crossing and the um, train blows its whistle, perfect. These are all wonderful experiences for your dog. Now, the other thing is surfaces. Surfaces are really important and something some dogs can be fearful of. I used to breed Siberian Huskies. Siberian Huskies instinctively are petrified of anything that resembles ice because of course they would freeze if they were in ice and especially if it's wet. So they hate linoleum and they hate tile. They're all like, oh, that's danger. Labradoodles don't have that, but you want to be aware of the fact that different surfaces can be a little bit scary for a dog. So great, well, your house is perfect for this. You can use an area rug. You can use even uh, different carpeted areas. You probably have tile or hardwood somewhere in your floor. Get them on all those different surfaces. Also make those surfaces wet. So when you're washing the floor, get your tile floor with a fair bit of water on it. Get your puppy walking on that. Get them to learn that they're gonna slip and slide and that it's safe, it's okay, that you're going to look after them. They're not gonna break their leg and it's not gonna be the end of the world. So that's a great opportunity. Outside, you are probably going to have some grass. You might have pavement or concrete or maybe gravel for your driveway. Now they're gonna have experienced all these things here at our house. We will have started that process with your Labradoodle puppy, but you want to be continuing to build on it. And don't forget, your puppy's window of socialization is up till 12 weeks, and if you really push it, 16 weeks. Your puppy's with us for the first 10 weeks. So most of that is going to be done here, but they will have learned that we're the ones to trust. So they'll trust people instinctively, but you have to build and transfer the trust they have in Reynolds and I over to you. And you have to continue working on the things we started with. Because puppies, they're little sponges, but things do go out of their heads sometimes. And usually what you want them to retain is what goes out of their head. <laughs> and the stuff you don't want them to remember if it was a bad experience, that's what will stay in their heads. So just like kids. So you probably have lots of different textures in your yard. You probably have some dirt. Maybe your kids have a sandbox. If you have a deck, that will be a different surface as well. All those things are great. Use them at different temperatures. So we have a, a very large deck in the front of our house and it's south facing. That dog deck rather gets very warm. So it's great. We can put the puppies out there. They get used to feeling something that's hot under their feet if it's summer. If it's winter, they get used to feeling something that's wet and cold under their feet. And the sound that their feet make on the deck is not it like any other sound their feet make on any other surface. So you're not only desensitizing them to surfaces, you're also working on sound, which is another important thing. So two, killing two birds with one stone. So you want to change the temperature, you want to change the texture, and you want to change the fact that it's going to be um, dry or wet. And you can even do things like, it's okay for your puppy to eat some Honey Nut Cheerios from time to time. Throw a few on the floor so they're maybe chasing after that, and they're scrabbling around and they're hearing some sounds from, from that as well. Um, going to the beach is another great thing because they can learn how to walk on unsurf uh, uneven surfaces, climb over logs. We just need to be sure you're practicing safe social distancing, that you're at a beach area that your dog is allowed to be at, and that you're uh, at least six feet away from anyone else. And ideally, you can get into the water with your puppy. So hopefully there's some sand, there's some rocks, and there's some logs and the water for your puppy to experience. The other thing is going for a hike in a backcountry type area where you have a forest experience. And again, the forest floor is very different than any other surface. The sounds are different. Everything will be different there. So if you can find somewhere again where you can safely social distance, perfect. That's an excellent thing to do. And the other thing you can do at home, which is really fun and your kids will really enjoy, is make an obstacle course for your puppy. You don't need to have any fancy equipment. Take a basket, turn it upside down, get some stacks of toilet paper, assuming you have uh, been able to find toilet paper, or uh, paper towel rolls. Just get some empty boxes, anything like that, pile them up different heights, different looks, and then take your puppy on a leash and go around these obstacles. 
then get them to go over the obstacles, get them to sit on the obstacles, make your own fun obstacle course. It's really fun, it's really good for your puppy's mind and it's great things for kids to do because they love to set up obstacle courses. You can have things they have to step over, you can make little things that they have to go under, you can make a fort. Your kids will have all sorts of brilliant ideas, way more than you and I probably will have. Now the other thing you want to do, because you probably are not going to have your puppy see very many people, nobody that's um, perhaps in a uniform, you're not going to be able to have as many different uh, people that they're going to be able to see close up. Beards, hats, men tend to always be a little bit more frightening for dogs than women. And so that's why I mentioned beards and hats because more that's men that wear that more than women do. Most women don't have beards. So if you've got uh, Halloween costumes, get those out. Get your kids to play dress up and you play dress up too. Put on something entirely different so you don't look anything like yourself. Find a hat or make a hat out of something. When I grew up, my dad used to make me a pirate hat out of the newspaper. So Google that. I'm sure there's a YouTube video for it. Make a pirate hat so that you've got something different on your head. You can even take a Tupperware container and put it on top of your head. So Reynolds and I do that lots with the puppies. We put all sorts of things on our heads all the time so we look different. And we'll come in and we'll go Whoa! and we'll try to look like a scary monster or something quite different. We'll wear different clothing, but dress up, put on a wig. If you've got a mask, awesome. Use masks a lot. You can probably order some online, get a couple you can have your own little pre-Halloween party at home and do that early. The kids will love it, they'll enjoy it. If you have a young daughter, uh, she maybe has a unicorn uh, costume or a ballerina costume, get her to dress up like that. Uh, if, you're, if you have young boys, if they have a fireman outfit or Spider-Man outfit, something like that, or maybe a superhero one with a cape, terrific. All those things are fantastic. So get some costumes, get some wigs, get some funny stuff going on. Another great family activity for everyone to do and it's fantastic for your puppy. Now when you're doing this, remember to change your voice too. So you might want to talk like this and then you might want to talk like that. Try and fool your puppy. Try and get them so they don't know you are you. So go off, put on your, your crazy outfit, come back out and have a different voice. That's a great way for them to go, wait a minute, do I know you? They may bark at you. Quite often when Reynolds and I come in and if we make funny noises or we have something on our heads, um, sometimes Reynolds takes the mops that we have for the floor, the clean ones, and he puts them on top of his head and the puppies will bark. So these are all great experiences for them. They think you're someone entirely different. Now the one way that is very difficult to trick your dog is scent. Dogs rely on scent for almost all their information. They know what you smell like. So changing your scent is really difficult, but get a light scent, a little bit of perfume, assuming you don't have scent sensitivities, spray it on yourself or even a really nice soap or have a bath with lavender, anything like that. Or if you use a sachet in your closets, put that somewhere on your body so that there's a little bit of a different scent as to your own and they don't recognize who you are right away. It's really great. Uh, Labradoodles excel at scent work and if you are following along on our owner's Facebook page, you will see that um, our winner of our uh, contest number two was a dog, Ruby, who was doing scent detection. Ruby's an adult dog. This is something your dog can do forever. It's a fantastic thing for their brains and Labradoodles do excel at um, using their, their noses and at scent dis detection. So um, the other thing you can use is lots of props. Maybe you have a walker, maybe you have a cane, maybe you have a walking stick, uh, maybe you have a really big shopping bag. Uh, Costco has a great big shopping bag, so if you happen to have one of those, use those too when you're dressing up and, and, and use those here and there every now and then so dogs are used to those things. 
Now the next thing is um, textures. So that's why I have these toys out here. So you'll see this toy. This is um, sort of the type of toy that you're going to get in your package. This is one of the types of things you'll get. And you'll see there's different textures in this toy. There's a nice hard rope, then there's a little bit of a frayed end, and then there's a very soft end, and there's also a squeaky end. So this is an excellent toy because of course toys form an important important part of your puppy's life. So uh, when you get your starter kit from us, the toys that you'll get from us will be designed specifically so that they have all sorts of different interaction for your puppy. Same as this one here is just a little one, but you can see it has these individual little legs that are something different for them to chew on. It has a squeaker as well. And this is a nice little tiny one. So when your puppy's really small, it's not overwhelming and too big for them. Now sounds, what are we going to do for sounds? So I mentioned before about using YouTube, uh, your regular cable TV, Amazon, whatever. You don't have to um, just do um, playlists from YouTube with sirens and nature shows. Put on HGTV, put on some rerun. I'm, there'll probably be hundreds of reruns of football and hockey and soccer because there's none of those going on right now. Let them listen to the crowds cheering. Even something like a soap opera where there's a lot of angry voices usually, things like that. So they hear all sorts of different emotions, lots of different people speaking, their cadence will be different. Those are all really good things for your puppy to be listening to. And then of course on uh, YouTube and on cable, there's lots of radio and lots of music put that on too. One day they can listen to opera, one day they can listen to country. Do all sorts of variety of music for them so that they don't become habituated to just one thing. The other thing you can do is get paper bags and just rustle them. So right now, if you go to the grocery store, because we're not supposed to use our reusable bags, your groceries tend to come home in um, the brown paper bags. So take those bags, crumple them up, put them on the floor, put some treats in them, make your, make your puppy go inside the bag, explore around when they're in the bag, that will make all sorts of noise that sort of experience. Um, you can also do plastic bags. So if you're getting your uh, produce and you have the plastic bags, just rub them together, make the plastic sound. If you have deliveries and everyone's getting deliveries right now, you'll probably get some bubble wrap with something. Pop the bubbles in the bubble wrap. That's another great thing for puppies. They just think that is so fascinating when they hear that. Uh, and then another thing you can do is you can get an empty water bottle and you can take the label off of it, take the cap off of it and give that water bottle to your puppy. Let them crinkle it all up and make all sorts of sounds with it. You can even put some rocks in it and put the cap back on. You can shake it. That makes all sorts of great sound um, and they can roll it around. That's lots of fun for a puppy to use. Uh, you can get pop cans or beer cans, squish them so they hear all of that sound. Don't let them play with those because those are not safe for them to play with but make the sounds when you have them uh, and then for a really fun thing for younger kids let them in the cupboards let them get those pots and pans now it's seven o'clock every night all of us are going out and we're banging our pots and pans to show our love for um, all the healthcare workers and uh, first responders so do that get your puppy out there get them to hear all those pots and pans and banging and get your kids in your cupboards and root around in those cupboards the kids will love it your puppy will love it it's a great experience for them now the other thing you want to do is show them all sorts of new sites so wheelbarrows wheelbarrows can sometimes be a frightening thing garbage cans when it's garbage day, especially if you have a metal garbage can or even if you have a plastic one, your garbage can's out, take your puppy out with you to the curb to pick your can up, but don't just carry it back in, roll it. It'll make a different sound and your puppy's gonna be like, whoop, what is that? Great experience for them. The wheelbarrow, turn the wheelbarrow upside down, you put your puppy in the wheelbarrow, let them have a ride in the wheelbarrow once they're comfortable with it. Again, lots of fun new experiences, all building trust. 
your lawnmower. Make sure you have your lawnmower out. Turn your lawnmower on and off. If you have a tractor lawnmower, a riding lawnmower thing, hold your puppy and drive your lawnmower. We do that with all of your puppies here, by the way. They're all desensitized to that here, but continue building on that. Do that. Put the sprinkler on and let them run through the sprinkler. Get your kids to run through the sprinkler with them. Get a kitty's wading pool. Get your puppy in the wading pool so they're in the water. More experience. Turn the wading pool upside down. Bang on it. Put some gravel on it. Get them to run across it. We do all of those things here too. Great thing to continue on with. Super good experience. There's sound, there's texture, there's the skidding, all sorts of stuff when you go on the wading pool upside down. So lots of things that roll around are always really good because things that roll around seemingly on their own can be a little bit frightening to puppies, even to uh, grown up dogs. Then take all your garden tools, your rakes, your hose, your shovels, your spades, get those out, have them standing up, knock them all over, bang them together, put them out in the yard and have your puppy come and sniff them, get your puppy to walk over them like it's an obstacle course. And then last is scents. So we talked about spraying yourself with some scents and using a sachet. What else can you do for scent training with your puppy? Laundry. Puppies love laundry. They all love your dirty laundry. They want your socks and your underwear. And they'll usually bring your underwear out when you have guests. But right now with social distancing, you don't need to worry because there's no guests. So bring your dirty laundry out. Bring, them in, bring it in a basket. Let your puppy explore your dirty laundry. Lots of scents and lots of things there. If you do enjoy wearing scent yourself, then make a point of wearing it even though you're not going out anywhere. Put those clothes in the laundry basket and let your puppy sniff those things. Let them smell the garbage. Yeah, puppies love garbage. Don't let them eat the garbage, but let them near the garbage and let them sniff the garbage. This just fills their mind with so many things. Great mental stimulation. Bones, of course, have lots of different scents. When your puppy's finished with one of the bones, leave the bone out, don't refrigerate it. Let them smell that in the morning. It will smell a little bit off. You won't like the smell, but it will be really interesting to your puppy. Then dispose of it, obviously, because you don't want the smell in your house. Leave it outside maybe if you need to. If you have flower pots, let them go around and smell the dirt that's in your flower pot. If you grow your own herbs, let them smell those herbs because those are all, again, nice, wonderful, different scents for them to enjoy. Get some branches. Every branch smells different. So a pine branch smells different from a cedar bough. Get some of those out and work with them with that. And then finally, leaves. Use leaves, rustle them together for a great amount of noise. Let them smell the leaves. Probably there's been other little animals through the leaves, maybe a shrew or something. They'll just get so much stimulation and satisfaction out of that. Let your kids throw the leaves around and then rake them up and then roll around with your puppy in them. It's, those are all really good um, activities. And another thing to do is to get a snuffle mat. If you go on the owner's page and you look for um, posts from today, which is April the 9th, you will see that there is some postings on there for snuffle mats. And I've posted a couple of links on how to make your own snuffle mat. This is something the kids can help you with. It's really inexpensive, it's really easy to do, and it's a fabulous thing for your puppies. If you can't find the post, just ask me in the comments below here and I'll post the links again. Now finally on this, um, on the toy here, this one last toy that we have here, this is not really a toy. Um, you'll get this or something similar, hopefully if we can still get them in your pickup package. This is very soft. This mimics another puppy. So this is like your puppy having a litter mate nearby to sleep to. So textures and things like this are all really important to your puppy. So we have the chewy and the soft all soft for comfort and then the different little bits and the texture in here too for playing and even this uh, is one of our rimmed crate beds this is soft and is very appealing to your puppy still has a nice raised bit for them to rest their head and then outside has a little bit of a different texture so again lots of tactile sensations for them to enjoy 
So that's lots of tips for you. Uh, you'll probably want to watch this video a few times because there's lots of information here. But as you can see, it's really easy to properly socialize your puppy successfully, even with social distancing and COVID-19 procedures being followed precisely and keeping all of us safe. Now, if you've got any questions or even better, if you've got some fantastic idea about how to socialize your puppy, or if you've got a thought and you want to ask me, is this a good way to socialize your puppy? Please post it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. And this is all great things you can think of while you're waiting for your Labradoodle puppy from Van Isle Labradoodles to arrive. Thanks so much for watching.